Game of Thrones Meets Management is an action-packed American fantasy drama TV show series created by Hallie Kolowski, Jay Stratton, Jake Baldwin, Jeffrey Chapman, and Nima Dustani for Finger Puppet Management. The show is set on the continents of Westeros and Essos. Following several different plot lines, the show is centered around the three main characters completing for the ultimate management position on the Iron Throne, Khaleesi, Cersei, and Jon Snow. Our characters meet many friends and foes along their journey to King's Landing. Loved ones will be lost, but that is just what happens. Because when you play the game of the thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. Our target audience is anyone between the ages of 16 and 30 years old who likes fantasy and business combined. Because our show uses fantasy elements to demonstrate management concepts. We could have had our show in a basic work or office environment, but we were afraid that that would bore our audience. So we decided to use those same management concepts and apply it to one of America's favorite shows. That way we can keep our viewers entertained and learning at the same time. One example of this is when Khaleesi is having a tough time with the dragons because they are terrorizing the people. So she uses a rational decision process to help solve the situation. Queen Cersei Lannister is a strong and ruthless leader willing to die for her children. Her instinct and nature is to protect those she loves. With every loss she has experienced, first with Joffrey, then her daughter Marcella, and later Tommen, she becomes more and more triggered to succumb to her dark side. Cersei is the widow of Robert Bartheon and the current queen of the Seven Kingdoms. She is the daughter of Lord Tywin Lannister, the wealthiest lord in the Westeros. Her siblings include her twin brother Jaime Lannister, and her midget brother, Tyron Lannister. She may seem cold-hearted, but the loss of her three children have shaped her into the strong, independent manager she is today. Daenerys Targaryen, also known as Khaleesi, is a strong leader and can lead large, diverse groups of individuals. She is an understanding leader. She values loyalty and friendship. She is supported by many because she is a queen who leads with her head and her heart. She conquered Slaver's Bay, which started her journey to build an army and march towards King's Landing and the Iron Throne. She meets many people along the way and encounters many challenges which shape her into the leader she is destined to be. She is a great problem solver and a fair queen to her people. Next, we have Tyron Lannister, a loyal and true friend to many. He believes in serving those who have good intentions. He is smart, witty, and stealthy. He is a survivor and will serve as a hand of Queen Khaleesi. He will join her army and fight for the Iron Throne at King's Landing when the time comes. Jon Snow has a very good moral compass. He lives his life with honor and even the most difficult of times. Growing up, Jon did not have a mother figure around him. Jon as a kid was on the bottom, being raised with all the poor kids so John had to learn to grow up quickly. John wanted to prove to everyone that he was something special, so he became a great swordsman. John has encountered many challenges in his life, and through all that, he still lives by honor and makes the right decisions. John is a great leader because he will always do what he feels is right. Sansa Stark is the eldest daughter of Ned Stark. She is young and shy. The many tragedies her family has faced has left her quiet and she has difficulty trusting new people. She does what she has to in order to survive. She has a pure heart and thinks through her decisions. Marjorie Tyrell is quite possibly the most charming character in the show. Not only beautiful, she's self-driven and self-motivated, as well as a strong with a brilliant mind. Her greatest asset is her ability to win the minds and loyalties of her subjects and is completely loyal to the House of Tyrell. Using these tactical advantages, she is successful in gaining a significant role in leadership. She is particularly effective with her tactics of manipulation, which is shown by marrying King Joffrey and becoming queen consort through their marriage. Once her husband is poisoned hours after the wedding ceremony, Marjorie moves her tactics towards her, his little brother and seduces Tommen, ultimately becoming his wife. However, her drive to become queen may have been her ultimate downfall, as she is possibly the greatest threat to Cersei, who in turn 
has her and her family destroyed. And finally, we have Tommen Bartheon, who is known for his innocence and kind-hearted nature, despite his family's notorious reputation for being mean-spirited. The virtuous king contains qualities fit for ruling, such as being humble, polite, compassionate, and kind. Although he holds these valuable assets, which are typically important for being a quality leader, he is vulnerable to being easily influenced. Shortly after his brother's passing, he becomes king and victim to the seduction and manipulation of his brother's widow Marjorie. He falls deeply in love with Marjorie and is absolutely crushed when she is killed. Once seeing the great sept of Baylor explode with Marjorie and her family inside, Tommen immediately removes his crown and calmly throws himself out the window to commit suicide. The Lion and the Rose In this episode, Queen Cersei loses her firstborn son, King Joffrey Bartheon. It is supposed to be the happiest day of a man's life when he marries his bride, except Joffrey was a cruel and mad king. He found pleasure and pain in hurting people. His favorite thing was to hit women or have them hit by his personal guards. Queen Marjorie was a kind-hearted and sweet young lady who freed Lady Sansa from her marriage to Joffrey. He tortured Sansa and treated her like the traitor his family believed she and her father were. Joffrey forced Sansa to marry his mother's Bridget, midget brother Tyron, who was gentleman in every way. At Joffrey's wedding, Tyron was made to serve Joffrey, forced to wait on him hand and foot. Joffrey requested Tyron fetch him some wine, and it was then that the day took a fatal turn. Frothed at the mouth, he collapsed to the floor, pale face and spasming to death. He had been poisoned to say the least. Who could have killed him? Watch to find out. Mother's Mercy Benchmarking applies to a tool that is useful in assessing competitors. It is exactly what Cersei is faced with in this episode. After analyzing the firm's external environment, it can be forecasted that Queen Cersei would lose all three of her children as the prophecy stated. The environmental uncertainty of her enemies in Dawn made way for her daughter Marcella's death. When Cersei was just a young girl, she met a woman who practiced witchcraft who told her that she would bear three children and lose them all. In this episode, Jamie is sent to Dawn to retrieve his daughter and bring her home to safety. Once on the ship home, Jamie holds his daughter in his arms and finally tells her that he is her real father. Marcella tells him that she already knows and that she is happy she is his daughter. However, the loving moment is brought to a halt when blood starts to pour out of her nose. It is clear that she has been poisoned before leaving Dawn. Jamie is left holding his daughter in his arms, bringing back the corpse of his innocent baby girl back to her mother, Cersei. The Winds of Winter In this episode, Cersei has finally gotten her revenge on the High Sparrow along with all his little sparrows, the Faith Militant and Queen Marjorie. Cersei locked Tommen away in the Red Keep so that he would be safe from the explosion of the wildfire. As Tommen watches, the Sep burst into nothing but a cloud of black smoke with his wife inside. He takes off his crown and takes his own life. Daenerys arranges a small council meeting. In this episode, Khaleesi gets together a meeting of her council and with the King of the North, Jon Snow. The objective is to try to discuss a way to gain temporary alliance with Cersei and the enemies to the south. There is a major threat coming in from the north, and they realize the only way to defeat it is to work together as a team. Through proper mediation and communication techniques, she and her counselor are able to come up with a plan for globalization and alliance of empires to accomplish a common goal. Tyron counsels. For this episode, Tyron tries to counsel Daenerys and explain explain negotiation tactics to try and create a unified, globalized kingdom. He understands that to accomplish this, Khaleesi will have to come to a compromise and come to an agreement with the competing organizations for an alliance. He explains to her that if she is to manage the entire kingdom, then she will have to be a different kind of manager and leader than her predecessors. First of his name. Here, Tommen is crowned the new king of the Seven Kingdoms as Marjorie watches on. 
Although it would seem cruel, many are relieved that he is a much wiser and holds much higher values that apply to management than his predecessor. His skills in effective leadership will be most valuable towards his success as a ruler of the kingdom. The newly widowed Marjorie moves her tactical approach towards seducing Tommen and hopefully becoming married once again to the king. Cersei, although clearly threatened by Marjorie, personally recommends this to her by stating he will need help at the top of the throne. Marjorie applies the acquired needs theory in order to become queen once again and convince Tommen to marry her. Destruction of the Gate In this episode, Queen Marjorie proves her loyalty to the House Tyrell when lying for her brother, Loras, on the stand and attempting to convince the council that the charges accused against him are false. Using this strategic plan, she would remain Queen of King's Landing, and Loras would remain the heir to her original kingdom at High Garden. After being held in contempt, Marjorie and her brother decide it is best for him to admit his crimes and to give up his future lordship of the High Garden. They await the trial of Cersei until something goes terribly wrong as Cersei has her own tactical planning in motion. Cersei has the Great Sept destroyed with Marjorie and many others in it, also killing many innocent bystanders in the process. King Tommen questions the managerial ethics in this decision. We have had a great start to the semester, starting off perfect, and we hope to duplicate that performance on this presentation. All we have left to do is the last three episodes. Also, we need to complete milestones three and four. And then lastly, we need to work on the final presentation. We have the outlines for the episodes already complete. So we are up to a good start. Tune in to see who will claim the Iron Throne once and for all. You can watch on the Finger Puppet Management YouTube channel every week on Sunday at 11 p.m. Eastern Time.